just what is the false gospel of desiring contact with the dead, also known as necromancy, which, which literally means seeking the dead. This is part 17 of the Occult in the Church Today series. We're working through a series on the occult, because the occult is talked about a lot in the Bible. It means to have secret or hidden knowledge and power. It's mystical. It relies on oneself. It's inherently prideful because it takes a certain person with special skills to be able to understand it and use the occult because it's mystical, it's hidden. It's a very prideful uh, thing to do where Christians rely on the Bible. The Bible is the sum of truth and the power of the indwelling Holy Spirit that resides in every Christian. But we find that the occult practices are in the church today. We're looking at that in this series. Please consider subscribing to this channel. There's a little red button in the bottom right hand corner. We want to pause real quickly just to remind ourselves that the Bible is spiritual truth. Jesus Christ is truth. He's the way, the truth, and the life. The Holy Spirit is truth. We find truth by comparing in the Bible spiritual with spiritual. Jesus' words are spirit or life because he's the word of God. We find Jesus in the Bible. We look at precept upon precept, line upon line, a little bit there, a little bit here, and that's how we come to spiritual truth. We don't need all these occultic practices because they're fake, they're false, they're deceptive. In our culture today, there's a great interest in seeking the dead. There's 29% of people in the United States that say they have been in touch with dead people. 18% have seen or been in the presence of a ghost. This is what they believe. 65% believe in at least one of the following, reincarnation, spiritual energy, belief in yoga as a spiritual practice, the evil eye, astrology, being in touch with the dead, psychics, ghostly encounters. There's a high belief in all these, of these occultic type of things, and they're not true. We're going to look at that in this video. The percentages are similar, Christian versus non-Christian. The percentages are about the same, and the trend is actually an increase in trend. So we're going to look at that in this video. This idea about seeking the dead, which is also known as necromancy, it's somebody that desires to be in contact with the dead. It's, it's against the Bible. It's prohibited. Deuteronomy 18.11. And we've referred to this verse a lot in this, this series we've been doing. There shall not be found among you any that uses divination, an observer of times, an enchanter, a witch, a charmer, a consulter with familiar spirits or demons, a wizard or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. When we look at that word necromancer, it's actually, uh, in the Hebrew, it's multiple words. It's derash el muth, really three words. It means literally seek to the dead, to seek to the dead. Look for the dead people and try to have a relationship with them. It's prohibited because it's not true. It brings in a lot of superstition and false teaching. Okay, here's some Bible examples of seeking the dead. King Saul and the medium of Endor. We've done videos on that. We've looked at that. But he, King Saul wanted to have communication with Samuel. We see the demoniacs that lived in the tombs in Matthew 8. Those who prioritize the dead over following Christ. You may remember the first, let the dead bury their own dead. People prioritize, oh, I've got to do this and go to the, have a funeral first. But they prioritize dead people over Christ. We also see verses that talk about making sacrifices to the dead, and we see this all the time in this world today. In addition, there's five supposed ghostly experiences that people point to and say, oh, you see, look at that in the Bible. That means there's, a, there's ghosts. The dead are not really dead. They can still communicate with the living. We see, for an example, in Job 4, the spirit that passed by Eliphaz, but angels are spirits. It doesn't say it was a dead person. It just says a spirit passed by, and we know that angels are spirits, and angels are sure real. Jesus walking on the water, and Jesus appearing uh, to many after the resurrection, people will say, oh, he's a ghost. And we obviously know that's not true. He was resurrected. He's God, and he was resurrected, and he actually did appear. So that doesn't have anything to do with proving that, there's, that the dead live on 
after they, they die. Acts 12, Peter's angel. They said, it, it's, it's a spirit. It's a spirit. But no, it was actually Peter. He got away from the prison. He wasn't an angel. He, he wasn't a spirit. It was actually him. And then finally, a video we just looked at, the media in Endor that surprised herself. She shrieked out when Samuel was raised. But that was a divine miracle where Samuel was raised to the dead and had an important reason because it pointed to Christ's judgment on the first king of Israel, King Saul. But in no way do any of these passages prove that the dead can communicate with the living. Okay, seeking the dead today. There's many, many ways that this is done. There's still mediums and seances and people are channel channeling the dead. We see on, on television high-tech ghost hunter shows. They, they find curious things and say, well, that's a ghost. There's movies, there's entertainment, a lot of movies about people not really being dead, but in some way these, these dead people can communicate or they never really died. Prayers to the dead, dead people's spirits remain with loved ones. The people think that the, the spirit of their, their sibling or their parent, they're still with them to this day. They have mysterious appearances of the dead. They say, oh, I saw my, my, my grandfather. And it was some nebulous type of account, but there's no proof, of course, because it wasn't real. Haunted houses, feelings and smells that, that remind them of dead ones that are gone. They say, well, that's them communicating to me. They assume that the dead, their dead relatives are actually watching them. There's all type of activities at cemeteries with candles and lights and talking to the dead. There's a huge amount of examples of people that think that they can actually, actually communicate with dead. Okay, we're commanded in the Bible not to seek the dead, but to seek the living. Seek the living. Why do people seek the dead? They want to get information. They want to have some comfort. They want to have an adventure. But when we look at the Bible, we see Isaiah 8, 19. When they shall say to you, seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and that the wizards that peep, and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God for the living to the dead? Well, why in the world would we seek out dead people when we have the living God? It, it, it doesn't make sense. The familiar spirits are, are people that, 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 that channel by demons. It's a demonic medium. The medium uses a demon to channel a false impression of a loved one, perhaps. Wizards are known one, and we're going to look at a video on wizards coming up. Okay, the living God. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living, Matthew 22. He's, he's the God of the living. You have come to Zion, the city of the living God. You are the epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God. You are the temple of the living God. You turn from idols, and people make idols out of their dead loved ones all the time. You turn from idols to serve the living and true God. And all true believers are the church of the living God. We, we serve a living God. So why is seeking the dead a false gospel? It is a false gospel because seeking the dead implies that life eternally goes on after death. And there's no final judgment day. There's the, 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 the dead loved one that repudiated Christ that didn't care anything about spiritual things. They, they, there's a judgment day. There's absolutely a judgment day. It, it, believing that they're still there somehow means that there's no need for Christ. There's no need for salvation. It's a false gospel that life can go on without salvation. We see in Hebrews 9.27, as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. There's death, and then there's silence for the unsaved, and then there's a judgment day. Romans 2.16, in the day, the final day, the last day, which is judgment day, when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Judgment day is actually part of the gospel. Because it's a time of, of salvation for God's people, but it's damnation or, or judgment for people that are not God's people. We've done a whole series on the spirit, soul, and body. I'll tag the playlist we've done. You may find some of those videos uh, interesting. So where are the saved and unsaved dead? We know what happens to the body, but what about that spirit and soul? Well, the saved dead, go, their spirit and soul go to be with Christ in heaven. 
And they don't leave him. They don't go with him and then they come back to the earth and they go back and forth. That's just not true. There's nothing in the Bible that says that. It, we're going to see a scripture coming up that says the exact opposite of that. They forevermore praise God. The unsaved dead, we find multiple scriptures, and we're going to look at some of those. They're in a place of isolation. It's silence, no fellowship. There's darkness. There's no communication, and they're as prisoners. There's no purpose, no knowledge. They cannot praise or hear from God. So we're going to look at that in the upcoming slides, but that's why there's no communication of the dead back with the living. Okay, first, we also want to remember that the soul and spirit are not fleshly. The spirit and soul separate from the body. There's many verses that say the spirit departed at death or the soul departed. And they are two different things. The spirit's our connection with God. Our soul is connection, our connection with the creation. The soul and spirit are not with the body in the grave. They either get a, go to heaven to be with Christ or they go to a place of silence. But even more than that, the soul and spirit, they're not physical. They cannot be seen. They cannot be heard. They cannot be smelled. They cannot be felt or tasted. Some people think they can smell their relatives. Or they can hear them talking. Or they see something, they think that's their relative. Or they, they, they taste the food and say, oh, that reminds me and that's him talking to me. That's all ridiculous nonsense. It's not true. Jesus' appearance, and he defined what a spirit is. He said unto them, Why are you troubled? Why do your thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see. This is after his resurrection. For a spirit has not flesh and bones, as you see me have. A spirit and a soul is not physical. Okay, the saved dead's activity is not on the earth. While we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. We are willing rather to be absent from the body, be present with the Lord. We're one or the other. We're either in the body or we're with God. We, we, we're not able to come and visit the earth or visit our, our loved ones. No, we're with Christ. God's pe people praise the Lord forevermore. If they come and visit the earth or go see the wickedness in this world again, they're not with the Lord forevermore. They're going back and forth. Notice Psalm 115, the dead praise not the Lord. Neither any that go down into silence, but we will bless the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Praise the Lord. In this passage, the dead are referring to the unsaved dead. Praise not the Lord, neither any that go down into silence. But the, the, the saved dead, we will bless the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Praise the Lord. Okay, so let's now look a little bit more detail. We're going to look at this in a few slides here. First, the unsaved dead, they're in isolation, they're silence, there's no fellowship, they're in darkness because there's no gospel truth, no communication with the living, they're like prisoners without hope, no purpose, no knowledge, they cannot praise or hear from God. I've listed a lot of verses on this slide, if you want to stop this video and look all these up, that's great, and we're going to go through some of these scriptures on the next few slides that follow. First, we see that the unsaved dead have no communication. No communication. That cuts to the core that there are no ghosts, and there, the, the, to seek the dead is a futile effort. He that goes down to the grave shall come up no more. He shall return no more to his house. Job 7. Psalm 88. I am counted with them that go to the pit, like the slain that lie in the grave, whom thou rememberest no more. To be in the grave remembered no more, they are cut off from thy hand. You have put away mine acquaintance far from me. You've made me an abomination to them. I am shut up and I cannot come forth. The dead are, as because they start smelling and everything else, they're, they're, they're an abomination. That's why they're put away and buried. Lazarus and the rich man is a parable, but the parable, one of the themes of the parable is that the rich man could not go back and warn his living brethren. The unsaved dead have no purpose and no knowledge. Sometimes people think they're unsaved uh, rel their, their relatives are watching over them and they're communicating to them and they're watching everything that goes on. Well, the Bible doesn't say that. Ecclesiastes 9, For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. Neither have they any more reward. Also their love, their hatred, their envy is now perished. Neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. They're done with this world. They don't come back. They're not there with their relatives. 
That's not true. Ecclesiastes 9.10, Whatsoever thy hand finds to do it, do it with thy might. There is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whether you, whether you go. It just isn't true. His breath goes forth, he returns to the earth, and that very day his thoughts perish. We don't like to hear these verses, and they're not talked about in the church very much, but they're true. That's what it means to be dead. An unsaved dead person knows nothing. They're just awaiting judgment day. The unsaved dead await that judgment day. It is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Revelation 20, I saw a great white throne. I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. That's where the saved people's names are. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And saved people, of course, because they had the Holy Spirit, will, will do good works. And they're, they're, they're saved because of their faith in Christ, but that faith produces good works. Okay, just a quick summary of this video on seeking the dead. Many people take a lot of their time and effort to seek the dead. And they're, they're looking for it. Some are just doing it just to, to, to sell books and movies and TV shows. But seeking the dead, as we saw of necromancy, it's sinful. It's against the Bible. We seek the living God. We don't seek dead people. There's a judge, future judgment day. We trust God that, that perhaps our relatives are of God's elect and they're with Christ right now. But, but we have to be real about it. And most likely many of our relatives or most of them are not. Seeking the dead is a false gospel. It provides a false hope to people that somehow they're not really gone. They're still functioning. They're still living. And that's just not true. Ghosts are not real. The saved dead do not visit the earth. They praise God forevermore. They're present with Christ. The unsaved dead are isolated and silenced with no communication with the living, awaiting judgment day. We're going to move on from here. The next video we're going to look at is the wizards that are in the church today. And there's a lot of them, but we need to be able to understand how to identify them. We're going to look at that in the next video. Please consider subscribing to this channel. And thank you very much for watching this video.